The Crypto Markets Update is brought to you by KuCoin, the best place to find the next crypto gem. All right, let's have a live look at Bitcoin. The Coindesk Bitcoin Price XVX Index is at 36,957 now. Well, it's trading pretty flat. Coindesk Ether Price ETX Index is at 24.29, taking a step back about 2.3%. The DFX Coindesk DeFi Index is also in retreat about 2.6% right now at 276. All right. Well, FTX US, the stateside subsidiary of FTX, raising $400 million after attaining an $8 billion valuation, one of the industry's largest Series A rounds with backers that include SoftBank, Tomasic, and Multicoin Capital. The cryptocurrency exchange intends to use the funds to launch new business lines and explore strategic investments and acquisitions. Joining us now with more is FTX US CEO, Brett Harrison. Hello there, Brett. So before we get into the raise, just wanted to get your outlook on the markets. We've been having a bit of a pullback. Do you see that temporary? How do you see the crypto industry moving forward? So over the last couple of weeks, we've generally seen uh, negative sentiment sort of across global markets, not just in crypto. We see the global equity markets dropping tremendously as well. And what I think we're seeing is that as fund managers and large institutions are trading Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies more, it's naturally going to create a correlated effect between cryptocurrencies and other global assets. So as long as we're going to see a risk off scenario, um, in the markets as a whole, I think it's going to affect crypto as well. Um, but also crypto is a very volatile asset and it's obviously reached record breaking highs over the last, you know, let's say four months or so. It's sort of natural to see pullbacks uh, and cycles with crypto. And given all the VC money that is pouring, you know, we just heard from Michael from Fireblocks with FTX US as well. We're hearing about raises pretty much every day with all that money pouring into the technological build out, uh, these new entrepreneurs old entrepreneurs who are raising fund funding rounds. We're, we're, I think we're naturally going to see the market roll back as these companies build and create more value for the industry. Actually, that's why I was just uh, going to ask, you know, all this money was, was it that you've raised, is it locked in before the crypto markets declined? Would it have made a difference, you know, and will we see that enthusiasm from VCs taper off? Uh, it wasn't all locked in um, before our crypto market started to climb. You know, when we talk to our investors and what they're most excited about when it comes to FTX US, it's not just the, you know, the short term spot markets. I think in general businesses that let's say rely entirely on you know, retail trading volume in spot crypto can have a bit of a tough time during periods like the current one where retail investors tend to pull back in a big way whenever crypto asset prices are going down. But for us, we're looking at the long term, particularly, for example, our derivatives platform. So we you know, acquired Ledger X, we rebranded it to FTX US Derivatives. We're working this year to be able to bring margin Bitcoin and Ether futures to retail institutional customers. It's the prospect of bringing a large amount of this giant global derivatives market onshore that mostly doesn't exist in the United States that makes our investors most excited about the prospects for our business business, regardless of what the short term markets are doing and things like Bitcoin and Ether. So, Brett, I was going to ask you about the investors, but before we get into that, I, I, I do want to ask you a little bit about uh, what the SEC is doing with some uh, other exchanges right now. They're questioning about the crypto lending practices of them. Uh, how much of that is a concern to FDX? Um, how much of it is a concern in terms of not just your derivatives business, but your overall business in terms of how you're able to operate? Are you concerned about what the SEC might do to you? Yeah, excellent question. So for FTX US, you know, we've taken the position up to this point that there isn't much regulatory certainty yet about things that overlap with you know, securities regulations. For example, things like what tokens are considered securities versus commodities, um, in which case, if as an exchange you're offering an unregistered security product to un unaccredited investors, then that could you know, put you in trouble in the future. Same thing with lending products that might be considered securitized products or investment contracts. So that's why you know, we, we do hear a lot from our user base that they would like to see us list more tokens. But as an exchange, we've taken the position that you know, it's, it's much better to sort of look at the long run 
and know that if we're going to be able to list things, we have to be extra sure that this isn't going to be something that's going to get us in trouble with, for example, the SEC in the future. The derivatives platform is regulated by an entirely different regulator, which is the CFTC. And there, in terms of derivatives regulation, the path is very clear and well-trodden for places like the CME and ICE in terms of what they're able to offer with Bitcoin and Ether futures. So for that, we feel very confident that we are heading down the right regulated path with our existing federal licensed uh, derivatives platform, both the futures exchange and the clearinghouse. Any comment about what, what President Biden will do um, you know, with the potential of an executive order coming down the pike? So he said that he's you know, very concerned about, um, about national security as it relates to cryptocurrencies. I imagine probably the first thing that we're going to see from the administration is going to be some kind of order relating to stable coins and trying to understand what actually are they, um, which ones exist, are there any that propose any sort of systemic risks um, to the economy, are there any that propose risks to, um, to cybersecurity and to you know, the general functioning of our monetary system as it relates to, our, um, to other foreign, you know, foreign entities. I think that's probably the first thing that we're going to see come from um, from this executive order. And I think it follows in the heels of the president's working group where I think it's natural to want to be able to have common sense auditing of stable coins and their underlying assets to make sure they're not proposing systemic risks. Uh, Brett, my understanding is that one of the main goals for FTX US is to uh, take the first, the, the, the biggest exchange in the US and in that sense, passing over Coinbase. Um, let's just get into the Coinbase thing for a second. Um, so Coinbase, other than first mover advantage, um, what, what do you think it will take to actually, for FTX US to move to, to number one? What are some of the obstacles, the main obstacles that, are, that remain in terms of, you know, beating Coinbase? Sure. Um, so I think that retail users want to put their money in one place. It's, there's a lot of friction to being able to, for example, take into your entire you know, savings that you put into crypto and entirely move those from an existing platform to another one. Now, Coinbase has over you know, 60 million users. They are an incredibly successful pro product for retail, and they've really captured those retail users from their first mover advantage, being the first public exchange um, to, you know, to list and being around for almost, what, 10 years now. So we have a lot of work to do if we're going to beat them just head to head on the spot. That's why we have to, in order to be able to at least, you know, achieve um, the kinds of volumes and user bases that Coinbase has, to be able to diversify the product offerings. That's why, for example, we launched our NFT platform last year. That's why we're very excited about derivatives and not just crypto derivatives. We're interested in, you know, going beyond that, for example. And there's nothing that would stop us from listing, you know, a broad-based equity index future um, or a different kind of, you know, commodity future as well, in addition to crypto, crypto futures and options. And same thing with stocks as well. We're looking into hopefully offering you know, things like common stocks to U.S. investors and trying to give people a, a holistic product for people to invest, sort of regardless of whether they're interested in crypto or not. Uh, Brett, Coinbase does have one very important thing, though, which is the bit license for operating in New York. Um, I imagine that that is like a very lucrative customer base. How, how important is that? And is that something that you're trying to get? Absolutely. So we're, we are, we'd be super excited to be able to take New York customers. FTX US doesn't currently take New York customers. It's something that we're actively working on with the New York DFS, which is being able to be licensed properly in New York so that we can take New York customers. It's worth mentioning that the derivatives platform, um, because of federal exemption and because it's a federally licensed exchange, we actually can um, take New York customers um, for the derivative side of the business. So that could be something where we'll be able to open our doors for New York customers in one part of our asset offering, if not necessarily in, you know, let's, let's say in spot crypto immediately. But again, it's something that we're super actively working on with New York DFS. It's a very important piece of the puzzle. And it's very exciting to see, you know, people like Mayor Adams, you know, come out very, be very pro crypto, wanting to take their salary and then crypto and Bitcoin. And I think hopefully that the sentiment in New York really moves positively towards encouraging uh, companies like ourselves to be able to open business for all these New York customers that are you know, dying to, to become customers of places like the FTX US. There's also an announcement this morning that a crypto super PAC that's backed by uh, Anthony Scaramucci's firm, uh, Skybridge, as well as FTX's 
uh, just been announced. So I'm wondering, uh, what are you looking for in candidates and political action in D.C.? You know, I'm not personally involved in that project, so I you know, can't comment too much on it. But I will say that in general, having positive working relationships with legislators, with regulators, with legislators on both sides of the political aisle it is, is critically important. And the, and the critical piece of it is, is education. You know, one thing that made us very optimistic about the future of crypto in the United States was the congressional hearing that Sam Bankman Free testified at um, a few months ago that all of these legislators came together and wanted to have a productive conversation around what exactly is going on with crypto exchanges, what are the risks, what are the benefits, what are the potential innovations, how can we improve as a country in terms of fostering innovation in this industry. And I think that being able to present ourselves, for example, as an exchange to legislators and say, hey, we are, we are a resource for you. We would be happy to tell you what we see going on on the ground. We'd be happy to help advise on matters like, you know, what kinds of regulation would help both, you know, protect consumers and investors, but also be able to make the United States the place that people want to come and start businesses. We think that we're an excellent resource for that and we want to continue those relationships. So, Brett, uh, you know, you've just done, you just did this big uh, fundraise, of course, and it's, so what percentage of, F, of your equity is owned by FTX Global, the, the, the parent company, and uh, is, is Binance involved in any way uh, in FTX US or even in FTX Global? I mean, what, what, what's the equity relationship there, and yeah. does it affect your ability to deal with, with regulators? Um, so the answer is zero and none at all. So FTX US is not a subsidiary of FTX International. Um, our equity is not owned by FTX International. Uh, Binance is not on the cap table of either FTX or FTX US. Um, we do have a lot of similar you know, investors in the cap table and ultimate beneficial owners of both companies. Um, Sam Bankman Fried is the owner and founder and majority owner of both companies. Um, but it's not a subsidiary relationship between the two. They're actually operated okay. you know, separately, separate servers, separate technology, et cetera. Um, but they do have an affiliate relationship between the two.